please welcome to the stage, Dr. Glenn Gaudet. A few years ago, my graduate student, Josh Gershlak and I were having lunch. We're thinking about how to help patients who had heart attacks. There it was, right in front of us, the solution, a spinach salad. Yes, we all know spinach is good to eat, but we're not talking about eating spinach. Today, we're talking about making heart muscle from spinach leaves. It may sound crazy at first, but when you get curious about the world around you, you'll find solutions are right in front of you. Now, before we think about all the amazing things we can do with spinach, I'd like to give you a little background on heart disease. Every year, over seven million people die from heart attacks. It happens too often. You probably know someone who had a heart attack. My colleague at WPI had a heart attack. Doctors were able to place several stents in his heart. He was out of work for several months. We were very concerned about his health. Finally, he was able to make it back, but unfortunately, his energy level was never the same. See, the stents, they act like a wall of a tunnel. They're able to put, push the plaque out of the way and restore blood flow. But unfortunately, restoring blood flow does not regenerate the heart muscle that dies during a heart attack. When patients have a heart attack, the heart muscle dies, and that can decrease pump function in the heart. That can lead to heart failure. This is the big problem we're trying to address, restoring pump function to the heart. So how did we go about addressing this problem? We realized we needed to add new muscle to the heart. Fortunately, our colleagues are working on this problem. They can take cells from a patient and turn them into heart muscle cells. They beat just like normal muscle cells, and they require oxygen, just like normal muscle cells. And this is a big problem, trying to get these cells oxygen. Our heart receives oxygen through a series of blood vessels. They branch into smaller blood vessels so that all the cells in the heart are close to an oxygen source. This is the big problem we need to address if we want to grow heart muscle tissue. Current technologies, including 3D printing, cannot address this. They cannot make blood vessels small enough and with the complex branching structure that is needed to ensure that all the muscle cells get the oxygen they need. So we need to think about this problem differently. We need to get curious. We need to think outside the box. We need to get out of the laboratory, and in my case, head to the lunchroom. During lunch, Josh and I looked closely at a spinach leaf. We saw the veins in the spinach leaf. We saw the complex branching structure in the leaf. And just like our bodies transport fluid through our vessels, the spinach leaf also transports fluid through its vessels. So we wanted to get our hands on some spinach. We went down the road to the local sandwich shop and asked for a handful of spinach. And although they gave Josh a strange look, they gave him some free spinach. Now, of course, we can't just implant spinach leaf into patients. The, the plant cells would be rejected by the human body. But what if we could remove the plant cells from the spinach leaf and keep the vessels intact. We would be left with a scaffold made of cellulose. Cellulose is a material that has been shown to be biocompatible and is already in use to treat patients. Maybe we could use spinach for more than just food. To remove the, the cells from the spinach leaf, we inserted a needle in the stem of the leaf and we perfused detergent. Detergent breaks up the cell membrane and then washes away the plant cells. We are left with a transparent material with vessels, but we had to ensure that the plant cells were removed from the spinach leaf. Fortunately, at my university, we have a very collaborative environment. My colleague, Professor Tanya Domenko, in the biology and biotechnology department, 
was able to perform some complicated experiments to show that the plant cells had in fact been removed from the spinach leaf. We had created a ghost spinach leaf, a scaffold with vessels still in place. But we had to confirm that these vessels were still open. In order to do this, we injected red dye into the veins of the spinach leaf. We saw the red dye flow throughout the leaf. We also injected small particles about the same size as red blood cells. And these particles also flowed through the leaf. Finally, we injected blood into these leaves and we were able to see the blood go down the veins of the leaves and perfuse the leaf. Now we were ready to seed human cells onto these spinach scaffolds. We started with endothelial cells, the cells that lined the inside of our blood vessels. We injected them into the veins of the leaf. We were able to seed human endothelial cells inside the veins of the spinach scaffold. Next, we wanted to try the human contracting heart muscles that I mentioned earlier. We seated them on the scaffold. Take a look at this here. These are human heart muscle cells that are attached to a spinach scaffold and they're contracting. Yes, it's alive. <laughs> we measured the contraction in these cells. They contract at similar levels to when we grow these cells in normal cell culture conditions. We also looked at the electrical function. Again, very similar to when we grow these cells under normal cell culture condition. We can use these cells to populate a spinach scaffold, thereby creating contracting human heart muscle that has the vessels already in place to deliver oxygen to the cells. The cells desperately need this oxygen to survive. But why stop with heart disease? We're working with investigators from all across the world. We're now looking at using spinach leaves to regenerate skin. We're looking at bamboo as a scaffold for bone and parsley stems for blood vessels. Other investigators are using decellarized leaves to try to grow lung tissue on, a project they call lung on a leaf. When you think about all that nature has to offer, the opportunities are endless. And this technology is inexpensive, it's abundant, and it's environmentally friendly. So how did we come up with this new area of science of crossing biological kingdoms? We got curious, just like you would do. If you weren't curious, you wouldn't be here today or be watching this video. We saw connections between the blood that flows in our vessels and the water that flows in the spinach leaf. When we're young, we're taught that plants and animals are very different, but are they not also very similar? Hopefully after today, you won't look at spinach the same way. I think that's a good thing. When we look at the world differently, we can come up with solutions to the world's biggest problems. And how do we do this? What does it take to do this? It takes people like you, people who are passionate about changing the world, people who wanna create value for our world. We need to get curious about the world that's changing around us. We need to look for connections between seemingly unconnected things. And we need to focus on creating value for individuals, for stakeholders, and most importantly, for society. We need to put what we call the entrepreneurial mindset to work. I've been involved in heart research for almost 30 years. I've worked at some of the world's best hospitals, best engineering universities. After all my years of research, my aha moment came from a salad at lunch. Solutions to today's problems are all around us. We just need the right mindset to solve them. Thank you.